All right, guys. So that that was just kind of a, a, a picture of how the vocab words that I was talking about, the the, vert, the horizontal direction in those four stages, just how that was applied. That was the, the third ride on that horse. Um, of really the backbone of the program is uh, study and research on the science, art, and business of training and selling horses to the public from foundation to finish to marketing and sales. And so, like I said, that's a huge part of this program is working with experts in the industry to set industry quality standards for sell, training and selling horses to the public. So that was one of the things I was always amazed. Um, shoot, I started helping my dad running his colt starting business. And when I was like 10 years old, we had 30 outside horses and we did a lot of starting colts. I was always amazed when someone said they had 90 days of professional training. Shoot, sometimes they'd have 90 days of professional training and they wouldn't expect to have what we'd expect at the end of the first week. And so that's part of this is we try to set industry quality standards and certifications. So if I'm the consumer, most people are paying six to 800 bucks for a month to train a horse. And most people that are setting the foundation on a horse um, don't take the horse for less than two months. So if I'm the consumer and I'm paying $1,600 to set the foundation, what am I paying for? You know, and so that's that's what we're trying to work, just like BQA, Beef Quality Assurance, or CHA that's done an amazing job to try to have some consistency in the training quality. And so the TQA program, we break it down in the five different phases of training, of setting the foundation. Groundwork, phase one, two, three, and four. And those are the score sheets that I used in my masters. Um, I put 15 rides on those Colts and I had them all the way through phase four. For the industry quality standard, I took what I did with my personal horse training business for one month, and I expanded that for two months for an industry quality standard, and I'll talk more about that. But then you can see the four different stages of training, setting the foundation, building the foundation through doing jobs, testing the foundation, and then using and maintaining that foundation to get that solid horse to fill in for the public. And then the last thing is the four levels of training. And one of the things, like we said, training and selling horses to the public. So currently there's a huge demand, um, especially in my area for performance horse sales, ranch horse sales. But a lot of times there's a lack of consistency. Sometimes people will buy a horse at the building sell and put three months on them, shove a bit in their mouth and say they're a finished bridle horse. So we really try to promote high quality training here, training quality assurance. We're trying to assure our customer that they're getting training quality. So I just kind of break it down in some reasonable kind of time frame as a guideline for my students. Um, so the first one is a started prospect. This uh, usually around a two or three year old horse, you usually own them for around three to six months. The training, they'd have two or three months. Then that price range, we'd try to hit that five to 8,000. It's so like I said, it's training and selling horses to the public. And so the science, the art in the business, you know, I, I try, really to help my students, all the students that come to my program, they want to make money training and selling horses. And so I really try to preserve, you know, the Tom Dorrance, Ray Hunt philosophy that I was raised with. And, you know, I grew up with dad doing the Ed Connell books and that finished bridle horse. Well, shoot, to have a finished bridle horse riding straight up in the spade, you know, you start them at two and they're eight, nine before they're finished, which is great. I love that. But if we're trying to feed a family and selling horses, you know, how do we do that in a reasonable time frame where we're still producing a quality product? But then at the end of the day, if we're trying to feed a family, you know, how can we sell horses and be making money at the process? So the next one would be a solid prospect. This would be continually building on the TQA principles that we've already set. So that would be like a three to five year old horse. We'd own them for one to two years. The training in that would be the five to eight months. And the price range would be around that eight to 12,000. And that's if, you know, you're hitting the training trifecta, I tell my students, the task completion, the temperament and the foundation. The next one would, would be a seasoned horse. That would be around five to eight years old. You're gonna own them for around two to three years, training them for eight to 12 months training. The price range would be, you know, 12,000 to 15,000. All these, it could be more, you know what I mean? And selling them, I'm just trying to give students a guideline if they're following the TQA program and using the TQA score sheets. And big part of all this is I like to train a horse and then turn them out a little bit. There's a lot of overlap in my program between training horses and then working on ranches and doing day work. And so it works good. You set the foundation and then, you know, you're filling in, you're going and doing a job on this horse. And it's a lot easier to keep a horse longer. Like I said, if you're doing day work or if you're working on a ranch, 
where they're feeding your horse part of the time, you know, and so you don't have that expense. The last one's the babysitters and old campaigners. You know, that'd be around that eight to 15 years old or older. You're gonna own them for, for three to five years. The time would be 24 months training and the price range would be 15 to $30,000, depending on how solid they are. And so here's just some guidelines that I give my students um, in selling horses to try to keep the, the, the training quality, but then again, to help them hit the, the, their target market. So here's the score sheets. I realize it's a little bit small, but it'll, it'll kind of give you an idea of how the TQA program works and how the score sheets are designed. Uh, like I said, I break it down into different phases. There's four different phases. These are the actual score sheets that I did with my masters. You can see on the left side of the score sheets, on the far left there, we have groundwork. So there's task completion and foundation. So there's different things. There's eight different things on every score sheet that we're tracking. So like we have good to catch, stage one with willing submission, end in a crisis, horizontal direction, stage one, two, three, four, lead with willing submission and pick up feet. So that's my groundwork. I don't, it's not just about getting them gentle. I'm instilling that foundation to ultimately go do a raining pattern or turn with the cow. Those are those same vocab words. Then you can see I jump clear to phase four. It's those same vocab words that I've taken all the way through um, as far as loping circles, you know, rollback spins, um, you know, that vertical flexion at a walk, trot, lope, basically just that raining cow horse foundation. And then you can see on the right side, there's the temperament. So we have things like self-preservation, confidence, energy, willingness, reaction to social separation, sensitivity. And so you will mark it on that side as well, depending on where your horse is. So where a lot of people have problems is they try to do task completions. They're trying to get him caught and saddled. When the self-preservation is super high, the confidence low, they have high energy. So my grandpa, my dad, they naturally had these score sheets in their head. They naturally knew to get the energy down and the work on the foundation before they tried to accomplish things on the task completion side. And so that's why I really have tried to do is bring a scientific component, like I said, of what I thought I saw my dad and grandpa do. So here's a writing log that I have all my students fill out. You can see at the top, there's the owner name, the info, the arrival date, departure date. You know, one thing, the payment method amount, if you have a bunch of horses, Sometimes owners like to pay it all at the beginning, sometimes at the end. And then you have the horse's name and you could put other things in there, but you can see every day you fill out a, a riding log. So you circle what phase you're in. So I'd say I'd circle that. We're doing the groundwork. And then you can see a one on the foundation task completion and that correlates with the one over there, good to catch. So on day one, you know, I'd start him and say, good to catch. So on that one, maybe the first day it took a long time to catch him. Wasn't very good to catch. Maybe I'd give him a negative two or even a negative three on good to catch. And then you go just right down the list on all those. On the other side's the temperament. So number one on that side would be self-preservation. Where was his self-preservation on day one? Okay, so maybe he had really high self-preservation. You know, I'd give him a negative three on self-preservation. Well, then every day I'm tracking him. The temperament should get better if I'm doing my job as a good quality trainer. I'm working on the temperament and then you'll see the task completions. I also have comments here that you can write there every day. I have the students write um, a comment. You know, maybe sometimes they're stiffer to the left or to the right, high energy, maybe they buck. So these are the score sheets that I have my students fill out. And then a huge part of TQA is the client education. At the end of every training period, the, the student sits down with their client and they, you know, like I try to tell them just like, I'd go into a parent-teacher conference and they sit me down and they say, my son's Teo, here's how Teo did, here's how he scored in math and reading and work well and play with others or whatever, there's a score. So this is a scoring system that the owner, could, the trainer could sit down with the owner and let their horse know how they're doing according to the TQA program. So they could say things according to TQA, at the end of two months training, this is where they should be. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that every horse is gonna fit it, but at least it gives you a guide to say, you know, most horses should be here, you know, and then you could sit down with the client and go, you know, maybe this is a tougher horse. How much more money do you want to put in with them? And you can just have that, that conversation with them. Then the next thing we have, I talked about the foundation to finish score sheets. So the first sets of score sheets have to do with that six to $800 for setting the foundation on that horse. The next one's now taking that horse to go market and sell them. So you can see here, same thing. There's the foundation warm up, which is just that reigning cow horse foundation that we're building on. Again, it has the temperament, but then over here, there's the task completions. And so within the TQA program, I have different competitions and I'll talk about them in a little bit, 
but um, it has phases. So like say raining, there's phase one, two, three, four. We have competitions that we host for youth development. And the design of this is to help kids understand so you can see the TQA raining, fence work. I have ranch roping competitions. Um, a lot of my students go on to work on feedlots. So um, we have different feedlot competitions to teach them the skills that they'll need if they get hired working on a feedlot. And then I even have rodeo competitions. I have heading, healing, breakaway, calf roping, and I even have a barrel competition. Um, but I break it down in the different phases, just like in starting a colt, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. So if I'm gonna say do a barrel horse, say one of my students wants to make and sell barrel horses, it's the same foundation that you instill on that horse and building the confidence in phase one barrels, which would be trotting correctly around the barrels and on and on with all the different events there. And again, you can see up here. So I have in the, the sell horse score sheets, you can see the horse, the owner, whether it's you, I partner with a lot of people. Well, not a lot of people, one group of people, uh, the Harrington and Hershey's, they have really good horses. I help promote their horses. So they own the horse and then I ride them for two or three years and sell them. The purchase price, how much money you have into them, the target market, what's your target market? What are you, what are you trying to hit? Are you trying to hit that solid prospect, that seasoned horse? The sale, what's your sale? What's your sale date? And so it really gives you these, the purpose of TQA is to help you reach your goals. Um, and so that helps you outline it. One of the things that's tricky, especially when it's your own horse, is you don't put the quality riding in it. So this helps the kids sit down, they say, okay, I'm taking this horse to the Van Norman horse cell next spring. So then I know I can start riding him. I'll work through like say Van Norman's, I have to, uh, I'll do a rainy pattern. I'll box a cow, take it down the fence, rope it. There'll be a ranch roping and there's a team roping. Okay, so I know that's ultimately where I need to take that horse. Well, I'll start, you know, on all these phase ones, I'll start building that foundation. So when I get to the horse cell, he's through phase four and he has a solid foundation in the areas that I need to go perform on. The other thing I've broken all these down, again, following the same TQA format with the different phases, like here's the ranch roping. In the ranch roping, we it's not just horsemanship, it's horsemanship, stockmanship, roping, teamwork, and time. So you can see here in the phase four, we have ranch roping competitions and the focus on there isn't so much throwing fancy shots. It's really, at the end of the day, if these are my cows, who would I want to heal to be safe, to be efficient, to get the job done? And as you can see here, I have the same vocab words, willing submission, vertical direction, the four stages. I also go into defining stockmanship. Um, you can see the definition of stockmanship, flight zone, pressure zone. So that's what these, you know, my students are learning, but even in the youth development program that starts at kindergarten, I start teaching my kids this. So not only do they learn the skills, not only is it a family business, but the purpose of the whole TQA program is to release these kids out in the industry to go work for horse trainers, go work selling horses, or to go get a job on a ranch. I visit with people all the time working on ranchers and it's hard to find kids that have these skills. So that's the focus of the TQA program is teaching them there. So like I said, here's the groundwork. It's pretty basic, phase two, and then it goes right in in the ranch roping. Here's one on fence work. So again, we start them out with the cutting flag, uh, rope and the dummy, most all the stuff that we do, it starts out with dummies and it's pretty basic. Then we have the phase four fence work. Um, you can see the scoring system here. So these would be the TQA sell horse score sheets. So we have it like a competition. We score it, we get prizes, but it's really helping these horses get ready to market and sell. Here's the feedlot. You can see the phase one and phase four. Again, it follows the TQA format where everything has four phases. Um, starting pretty basic and then getting more more advanced. And so, like I said, it's a youth development program, but the big part is at the end, these kids grow up doing it and then they can go out, make money in the industry, either trailing, training or selling horses or doing day work. So the certifications, the TQA certifications that I offer through the program, one of them is a colt starting certification. And so uh, right here, the kids start the, the colts at TVCC, they need to score an 85% or better. The judges that score it, I have Chris Cox, Nick Dowers, Martin Black, and Ty Van Norman. We film it and then we send it to them. There's a scoring format that I really kind of work with Road to the Horse and use part of that. Um, but there's 25% on task completions, 25% on foundation, 25% on temperament, 12.5% um, on the client education interaction, and then 12.5% on the horse health and welfare. 
And so that's housed at TVCC. They have three months to get two months training on it, basically. That leaves some time in case a horse gets lame or they get kind of sick, they can um, get it within that time frame. Here's the 15 main task completions according to TQA that I tried to set that what a horse should be at the end of two months. Like I said, according to TQA and what I try to teach, this isn't necessarily saying everyone has to do this. This is just the training quality standards that I've set through TQA and I teach the students through my program. So good to catch, stand to saddle and accept bridle, stand to get on for an inexperienced horse owner. Here's one of my biggest pet peeves, lope in a straight line away from the barn. Uh, walk, trot, and lope a circle both directions. Stop at a walk, trot, and lope by asking with both reins. Pivot around an inside front foot, so that'd be that stage one. Use the hindquarters to pull the horse in reverse motion for stopping and backing. Front feet and hind feet move together in a lateral motion. That'd be like your side pass or your two track. Stop in the inside hind foot, walk and pull the other feet forward around it. That'd be like your roll back or spin. Again, those are the four stages, stage one, two, three, four that we instill in groundwork and we build all the way through it. Vertical flexion or breaking in the pole vertically. Pick up feet, load in a trailer. Another thing is stand quiet, tied up. I like a horse, I can just tie them up quiet and they stand quiet. And the next one is a foundation applied to jobs. So whatever that is, some kids may want to go on and they really want to target the trail horse. Some of them are reining cow horse. Some of them, you know, do more of the ranch roping. And some of the kids, you know, they want barrel horses, calf horses, breakaway. And so I encourage them to use some of the TQA. Um, they have a freestyle and they could come out of the box and rope a dummy coming out of the box. And big part of this is helping kids train the horses to go sell to the public, whatever type of horse they're trying to sell and whatever public they're they're trying to reach the, to reach the customer. Um, and then I have day work and ranch horse sales. So these are the other certifications. We have reining, fence work, feedlock, herd handling, stock dog, and then the ranch roping. And again, all those have four different phases. Again, with the TQA format, we break it down. We have score sheets. I have videos. The huge part of this is on the education. What's the education to, to build a solid foundation, obviously with the horses, but then with the kids or beginners. And um, a big part of this, we really include the parents, have the parents get involved. And then the last one, the rodeo horse sales. We have team roping, heading and healing, team roping, he uh, heading and healing, breakaway, calf roping and barrels. Again, four phases on all those. There's the score sheets, there's the videos. And like I said, some of that's really basic. Like on the barrels, it's just walking and trotting around the barrels doing correct. The phase four would be the rodeo run. And all of those, heading, healing, breakaway, calf roping, phase four, that's the rodeo run. I help out quite a bit at rodeo Bible camps. A lot of times we have kids that are trying to do a phase four, doing a dead run coming out of the box, and they couldn't back a horse quiet in the box and do it correct tracking a dummy at a walk or a slow trot. And so that's where it starts. We use the AQHA heading, healing score sheets. We score them on that, but we're scoring them just at a walk or a slow trot into a lope, just roping a dummy coming out of the box and they get scored on that. And a big part of that is I try to reward these kids for doing it correct. So much a rodeo and even on the ranch, it's trying to do it fast, try to slow them down, teach them to be efficient in what they're doing. So um, so really the industry certifications, really what I, I try to help kids do in training horses for the public is that six to $800 per month per horse. Currently there's no industry quality standard. If I'm the consumer and I am paying someone six to $800 to train my horse, there's no industry quality standard that says what I should expect. And sadly, there's a lot of people that are not really qualified to train horses. They try to accomplish the task completions. They don't work on the foundation. They don't get the temperament in order. And you have one chance to make a first impression. So they try to saddle a horse before they're ready. They try to catch the horse before they're ready. They blow the horse up and then they call the horse owner and they say, well, your horse is no good. No, you needed a quality, a qualified horse trainer training your horse and they could have helped them work through those problems. The next thing is selling horses to the public. So like I said, that 75 to 20,000, and it could be more than that, but um, just selling a horse, getting them ready for a some form of a performance horse sale. There's an amazing market for a horse with enough confidence to fill in for an inexperienced horse owner. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it's a trail horse, a pleasure horse, a ranch horse, a rodeo horse, a reigning cow horse. And so that's what I try to do is using the TQA format, setting the foundation, going through those different phases to have a solid horse that can fill in for an inexperienced horse owner. 
Currently, there's 7.1 million people in the equine industry and 85 to 90 percent are inexperienced horse owners. That's really the focus of my program is equipping that 10 percent to go train and sell to give a high quality product with consistency to that 85 to 90 percent that are seeking that. Um, the next one is um, is day work and so potentially earn 100 to 150 dollars per day. Um, and that could be if you're just strictly hired on for day work, or it could be obviously if you're working on a ranch and it's those same skills working on a ranch where horsemanship, stockmanship and roping skills are required. And I'll just give you a quick little, little, uh, an example here. Um, one winter I worked for Simplot and I, uh, they were paying me 2000 bucks a month. I was cabin heifers. Uh, they were giving me a place to live and I was eating at the cookhouse and I was on their insurance. And so I was making 2000 bucks with all expenses paid and they, allowed me to keep four horses there and all four of those were outside horses that I had went through the TQA program well I just had a month or two month on but I used my horsemanship and stockmanship skills and the foundation that I instilled that I could still get the job done on and so I had four outside horses and then I was charging 700 now I would have been charging 800 so that was $3,200 on top of the $2,000 that I was making and so that's what I really try to help. There's such a market for good quality horses. We could use these horses on the ranch. That's part of TQA's teaching these kids how to incorporate an equine business into their cattle business. A four-wheeler is just going to depreciate in value. Bringing them in the crells, um, using a, a chute for everything. There's a lot of that stuff that you could do out in the pasture and you can train a horse in the process and have fun with your kids. So that's where this comes in, the TQA Youth Development Program, all about having fun with their kids, having parents have fun with their kids. There's some 4-H programs. Um, currently, I work with the Malheur County Started Ranch Colt Project, the TQA Youth Colding Colt Starting. This is really where my heart is. I have a, a 6, 8, and 11-year-old, and this year um, I started, last year they started the Ranch Horse Project. This year, TQA has our own. We're partnering. We're going to have a sell at the end. And our kids are starting ponies. We're taking um, actually ex-bucking horse ponies and we're going to start them and, and then we'll take them through a, a horse sale at the end. And so we're teaching these same TQA vocab words going through groundwork phase one, two, three, four with the youth. And I am having a blast doing it, let me tell you. The other thing we have, the Waihee County Ranch Horse, we work with them, give them some of these score sheets to use in those. And then another one is the Working Ranch Horse Project here in the Valley too. Um, the, part of TQA is we host six shows a year. Um, there's three that are focused on parents and kids, and then there's three that are focused on the industry certification. So we host those at, T at TVCC, and this is an opportunity for students. And I have hybrid online classes that people could take an online class and then just show up for a three-day clinic and earn these certifications. And a huge part of the certifications, especially, you know, some of the kids might want to go on to get a job doing it. But the other part is really helping parents learn how to teach their kids. You know, and, and really my kids are starting to rodeo and and I'm going to take my kids, um, my my horses that I have, they're going to start calf roping and breakaway. And so I'm going to create these horses for them. Phase one, two, three, four calf roping. Well, I rode Bronx and team roped in college. I didn't calf rope, but I'm looking forward to work with experts in the industry. Phase one, two, three, four to help break it down, to take this horse through the program that as a parent, I can have this horse ready for my kid. And I feel like there's a real lack of teaching on that helping parents train their horses um, to equip them for their kids. Um, anyway, and, and I feel like part of it, we, we give buckles, we give prizes to really reward kids for doing it correct. And that's the thing, so much with rodeo or even showing, sometimes it's all about going fast instead of seeing how slow and correct. And through the entire program, we're always instilling those vocab words, okay? Another time is the family time. You know, the business and the sport. Currently right now, we have a family business. All three of my kids, we, we go do day work, we run some cows. Um, all three of my kids, that's part of the TQA Cell Horse Series, equips them. They ride my horses through the cell. It's just, it's a fun family atmosphere. And, you know, as we're thinking, you know, as you're running cows and as you're doing different things, thinking how we can cut and save and, you know, part of the low stress livestock handling is that saves us money when we're running our cows. But how do you put a value on spending time with your kids? And I, I think that that's hard to, you know, and the other thing, the scholarship component, um, kids grow up in this program. There's a lot of overlap in if you do own a ranch or if you do have cows, taking your kids out there, incorporating some of these principles that I teach where kids can learn these rodeo skills. They can learn the stock horse skills in a family business. 
tied to a sport that can lead to scholarships. Just an example, I got a $60,000 college education paid for for free because I had a rodeo scholarship. And so that's part of this is, is, um, is all the craziness, the world and everything is purely promoting the family time with the family business and a family sport that they could all do together. Like I said, I really encourage when I have these youth development opportunities, the parents to bring a horse, they enter the show, they pay a fee and the fee goes the year in prizes for the parents. It's just about, it's all about the kids. All right. You know, one thing I just want to hit on here is as I talk about, it's all about the kids. I, I talked about right here, um, the pyramid, you know, a horse, the fear that a horse is going to have is, you know, right, their prey, they think they're going to get eaten. With kids, a huge part of the fear is their self-image, okay? And that's one of the things that I really try to promote in this program is parents, is teachers, is coaches, and even em employers having employees that we're teaching our kids, we're teaching our employees, we're teaching them correct muscle memory. Because it's like I can take a horse and I could force a bunch of pressure on them and I can blow that horse up or a cow. As a dad, I could do the same thing with my kids. As a coach, I can do the same thing. As a teacher, I can I could blow them up. And part of that is I really break down the different ways that the brain functions. We have the cerebrum and the cerebellum. The cerebrum makes up 85% of our total brain volume. That's where we have our mental imagery and that's where we program muscle memory. And then we have a cerebellum, which is our subconscious mind, which is our actual muscle memory. So, so many times kids, whether they're training the horse, whether they're roping, their subconscious mind, that means they're not thinking, they're just doing it. So say they grab a horse and they just pull on the horse. They're, when they're roping, they're leading with their mind. They're not thinking that's just what they're doing. So as a coach, when I come up there and I try to speak to them, okay, a lot of times their muscle memory is long. Well, they need to spend time in their frontal lobe through mental imagery it, to program the muscle memory. So that's a huge part of TQA with the score sheets, with the videos, before you just go out there and see how fast you can go, watch the videos, learn the vocab words, see how slow you could go to spend time in your frontal lobe, learning the vocab words to program correct muscle memory in the subconscious. So you can see right over in the bottom there, we have the conscious, the subconscious, and the self-image bubble. And so those are the three different areas that I target in the TQA program. And you can see right there, this is my favorite part of the entire program. I love to take little kids and there's my son right there showing them how to swing, showing them how to do it correctly. And that's a big part of this. TQA is helping parents help their kids to instill correct muscle memory and program that self-image. Because one of the things I think is really sad, sometimes parents don't know, and they just, they put a lot of pressure on their kids and they push them up the pyramid. That little self-image bubble goes clear up the top and it's kind of sad. Sometimes kids, they associate how they perform with the love of their parents. So that puts them up at the top of the pyramid all the time. They have high adrenaline, high stress. They go compete. Dad's stressed, the kids are stressed, the horse is stressed. You know, that's in a competitive, you know, scenario, but the same thing's on the ranch. Sometimes, I mean, it's stressful. You're trying to get the cows moved out. You're trying to do all these different things. It's your family business. You go out there and everything's stressful, you know, in the self-image bubble, the dad's trying to do the best he can, but a lot of times it's high stress. And so that's the focus of it is slowing down and um, instilling that correct muscle memory. And then the last thing I really want to talk about is again, with the kids, I really want to wrap it up with the focus on the kids. You know, I, I've messed around with this a lot and I've, I've spent the last 20 years doing research. I had a lot of health problems when I was in high school and it really pushed me in to discover the different parts of a human body and, and especially in competing in that. And, and here's what I've come up with. And this is 20 years. It's going to probably take me another 20 years to, till I really feel like I know a lot about it. And a lot of this is for my kids. I have a six, eight and 10 year old and, you know, really talk to me in 10 years and I'll see how good it worked or whatever. But the three different parts that I teach is, is body, soul, and then there's an inner part there that I don't go very deep in lectures like this. I have other PowerPoints and lectures. I'll go deeper on that inner part, but for this sake, I'm just gonna break it down for body, soul, and identity. And then there's three different parts of the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotion. And that's really the training trifecta that I teach. You know, whether it's a horse or a cow or a dog or a kid or an employee with a ploy, is that task completion that's influencing the will. You know, that's where the willing submission comes in that they want to do it. The horse wants to do it. The cow wants to do it. The kid wants to do it. The employee wants to do it. How do I set it up 
through influencing their mind to do what I want. And so I, I have two ways to do it. I can either, I'd say I can either force the body or I can influence the soul. I can be a trainer where I'm just driving them to do it or through pressure and relief, through setting it up, I can make them want to do it. And so that's really where the emotion comes in. When they want to do it, when they're thinking about do it, then the emotions, they won't be clear up on the pyramid in their self-preservation doing it. I feel like a lot of horses, a lot of cows, a lot of kids, and a lot of employees, a lot of families, even when they are doing what you want, the emotion isn't there. They're in their sympathetic nervous system and their mind is negative, negative thoughts, negative emotion produces negative chemicals in the body, which is just unhealthy. And that's a huge part of this program is promoting health. To be perfectly honest, I was very competitive and I kind of blew myself up. I got chronic fatigue, mono, Epstein-Barr, took me a long time to get over it because I competed, I love to compete, but I put so much pressure on myself that it was unhealthy and it kind of broke me down. It took me a long time. And it's a big part of TQA is I, I want my kids to be competitive. I want them to go be successful, but I don't want them to, you know, be unhealthy in the process. So the middle part there is identity. And you can see all these pictures of my kids there as a person of authority, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a coach, whether you're an employer, a person in authority has the ability to shape their identity, their person's identity. So I'll give you an example. Say I, say I have a horse trainer in my class. So in his identity, he wants to be a good horse trainer. So he's gonna, he doesn't know a whole lot. So he goes in there, he doesn't have a lot of confidence. He's fear driven. He's really concerned about what I think is the teacher and he's making mistakes. He's very fear driven. He's at the top of the pyramid. It's just like a horse. If I can speak to his identity and say, hey, you know what, buddy? You're doing good. Man, I see so much potential as you as a horse trainer. <sighs> It just puffs them up. And so that's that inner part. So many times we, we miss that as a teacher, as a coach, we're just trying to move the body. I'm just trying to force the body, whether it's a horse, whether it's a cow, whether it's a kid, lead with your top strand. Instead of focusing on that inner part, the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotion, teaching them how to do it, helping them understand it to where pretty quick they are doing the correct things in their body. And like I said, that last part is the, the identity. I love that and it's amazing. I've had so many kids, I've had different times where they get pushed up the pyramid and I'll look at them and I'll say, I see untapped potential in you. I believe in you. And oh my gosh, their tears will just come down. A lot of times kids don't hear that. They don't have someone that is believing in them, that is speaking to their identity and they say, you know, and it may be something little. It may be, they may be struggling so bad. Like I help out, uh, kids in flag football. And I love the kid that's struggling. And he's not even getting close. I love to go find that kid and go, Hey man, you're doing good. You almost touched someone. You're so far away from getting a flag, but man, you are doing so good. So that's how I'll wrap it up. You know, as far as parents and teachers and coaches and especially parents, we need to make sure that we're instilling correct muscle memory in our kids and that we're not pushing them into their sympathetic nervous system. I feel like youth a large percentage of them are so confused on their identity they're trying to figure out <clears throat> where they fit in where they're accepted and it kind of pushes them in a lot of crazy different areas and and really in in competing in sports in riding i know the cha program is amazing at doing that and building people up and i could summarize the entire tqa program it's that it's building people up it's attaining that training trifecta and making a positive learning environment for parents and teachers and coaches and everyone involved in the equine ranching and rodeo industries. And so that's the end of my talk. And I, I, I thank you for listening to me.